This brings us to the end of the modeling process. We're left with a model that's composed of multiple objects. Some of these objects have complex stacks, which will make it easy to edit should the need ever arise in the future. I advise you at this point to save the model as a file with the word source on the end. I'll call this lamp source.max. Then it's important to collapse the multiple objects into a single object. Because when we want to insert this model into an architectural interior, we don't want to think about all of the various parts of this lamp. We just want to manage it as a single object. It'll make our life easier when we're doing a rendering. So I'll select all of these objects and use the collapse utility I'll set the output type to mesh and collapse to a single object and then collapse selected. Just to show you there's only one object in the scene now. We need to rename that to the name of the object itself. I'll call it lamp1. Notice that it's an editable mesh. It's no longer a poly. And this suits me fine because the mesh is the most efficient way to store the information. What were independent objects previously have now become elements within the mesh. All of their stack information is gone, however, so it would be much harder to modify these elements at this point. That's why I had you save a source file. So at this point, let's save this as lamp mesh. And I would say that we're done. In a real project, I would have assigned mapping coordinates and materials to the independent objects prior to collapsing them. And that's something that you'll learn about in the texturing module.